Hi, my name's Bev Anderson Tranter, a registered nurse for 25 years, a registered midwife for 23 years, and a neonatally certified nurse for 17 years. I'll be introducing you to the evacuation cot carry here in Australia's national capital at the Canberra Hospital. Very few maternity units or nurseries are located on the ground floor with a direct emergency exit to the outside. The prospect of evacuating neonates from a nursery, postnatal ward or delivery suite has in the past been problematic. The Centre of Newborn Care and the Delivery Suite at the Canberra Hospital are located on the third floor of this maternity unit and the postnatal ward on the second floor. When applying for accreditation in 1994, evacuation plans here centred around the movement to the main intensive care unit which, though in a separate building, was on the same level, accessed by linked corridors. However, when the Commonwealth Fire Board conducted a training course for staff, the experience of the Royal Newcastle Hospital immediately after the 1989 earthquake was shared. Due to extensive building damage, it was necessary to move all patients and staff to the nearby Newcastle Beach. This experience highlighted a gap in the hospital's evacuation plans for their neonates. There was the need to be able to transport the babies via the stairs to the outside of the building. Then once outside, these babies need to be contained within a suitable environment. In the past, only an evacuation smock had been utilised, usually made by staff. To evacuate the babies, they were placed in pouches attached to the smock. However, crucial limitations were evident. One, not being able to crawl should a smoke-filled environment be present. Two, a lack of observation of babies during transport. And three, the smock did not provide suitable accommodation once the babies were evacuated. Therefore, because of these limitations, the smock was not pursued. Hence, the development of the evacuation cot carry, the ECC. Features considered and employed are, it needed to be easily recognised and accessible. So the ECC is packaged in a bright yellow bag, which is also fire retardant, with red reflective tape, and is intended to be hung in an appropriate place near the babies, ready for immediate deployment. Two, it needs to be easily and rapidly deployed by staff. The evacuation cot carry can, in appropriately trained hands, be deployed in approximately 10 seconds. 3. It needed to allow the transport of several babies by one person. One person can support approximately 12 kilos of weight using the carry. This equates to 6 2 kilo babies, 4 3 kilo babies or 3 4 kilo babies. If this is too heavy for one person, it can also be dragged along the ground. Two people can also transport the load by taking one handle each. Four, it need to be able to be used in a smoked filled environment. Again, by dragging the cot along the ground by the tightening strap, allows for evacuation under the smoke level. Five, a safe environment was needed during and after evacuation. By utilising the baby's cot for transport, it also provides a safe environment when evacuated. So once the babies are delivered outside, the carriers can be removed to return for more babies if necessary. The babies remain contained within their cot. 6. Babies need to be continually observed during and after evacuation. The white net webbing allows ready visibility and the two middle straps can be separated for easy access to dealing with babies requiring attention. 7. The device need to be available. At this stage, the evacuation cot carry is the only commercially available neonatal evacuation device on the market. The evacuation cot carry is constructed of webbing. Different colours are used to distinguish the three different components of the carry. The webbing surrounding the cot is red, the handles are black, and the net is white. As mentioned before, the bag is made of bright yellow, fire retardant material. The red reflective tape allows for easy identification if power is lost and torches are required. Research revealed that different people read instructions in different ways. Some people require full instructions. So, there are brief but full instructions printed on the bag. Some people look for keywords, so these are highlighted in capitals. Others want a picture to look at, so a diagram is also provided. While others still ignore all instructions on the bag, pull the carry from the bag and try to attach it to the cot by themselves. So for these people, brief instructions on labels are attached to the carry itself. 
red straps around his cock, head, foot, handles, and pull. Ideally though, staff should be fully familiarised with deployment before any need to use it. Regular in-service is highly recommended. Babies can be loaded before, as already demonstrated, or after the cock carry is attached to the cock. And these openings in the centre webbing net allows continuous access to the babies. Pull the flap of the bag down, as directed. Grasp either side of the label, red straps around the cot. Pull it off the bag. Place this label under the top of the cot, under the rolled lip, so that you can see it through the perspex. Then run the red strap around the full perimeter of the cot, under the lip. It is then tensioned by the pulling, tightening strap through the plastic buckle at the foot of the cot. We are now ready for evacuation. It is intended to be used in one of six ways. Number one, one person can use the carry using both handles. Two, one person can use the carry over their shoulder using one handle and grasping the far side of the cot. Number three, two people can use the carry both grasping a handle each side of the cot. Number four, a single person can drag the cot along the floor in a smoke filled environment. Number five, one person can, if necessary, carry two cots, one over each shoulder. And number six, one person can, if necessary, drag two cots along the ground by the tightening straps. It's essential for this product to be repacked correctly to allow for quick deployment in times of emergency. Loosen the buckle, lift the perimeter webbing off, grasp either side of the label, red straps surround the cot, black loop velcro on the back of this label attaches to the hook velcro on the bag. Black, black, black handles need to be joined at the velcro middle. Straps ensure handles are closest to you in front of the white webbing. Grasp joined handles and push to the top of the bag, followed by the rest of the carry. Ensure the tightening strap with the pull label is last in the bag. Then close the bag with the white velcro strips on the bag. It's now ready for deployment and emergency evacuation. The number of evacuation cot carries used in each unit ultimately should be decided by that unit. However, our recommendations would be one for the nursery, one evacuation cot carry for every three to four babies. For the postnatal ward, one evacuation cot carry per each 10 beds. And the delivery suite, one to two evacuation cot carries per unit. The evacuation cot carry is marketed by Ostranta Medical.